Hello and welcome to another Intrinsic Valuation video from Learn Invest Achieve channel. In this video, we'll learn why Q-Rate retail stock fell by about 75% the last year and why it has a huge potential to come back, which makes this stock a unique and undervalued investment opportunity. I ask you to watch this video to the end for it to make sense because the usual valuation will not capture the intrinsic value of the stock. But before we go any further, I want to remind you that this video is not financial advice and is for entertainment purposes only. So I went over the annual reports of 2021 and a number of prior years, as you can see here, that I downloaded from the SEC website to learn more about the business and what drives the revenue, to forecast next year's revenue, free cash flow, and outstanding shares to ultimately find the intrinsic value of the stock. And as usual, I compile all the financial data that we need in this file and calculate the necessary ratios. So this company, Curate Retail, is a Fortune 500 company comprised of seven leading retail brands and they are QVC, HSN, Zulily, Billard Designs, Frontgate, Granite Hell, and Garden Road. This company dominates the video commerce by reaching more than 200 million homes worldwide via 14 television networks like QVC and HSN on cable TV if you are in the United States, and reaches millions more via multiple streaming services, social pages, mobile apps, websites, and print catalogs. It has two classes of common stock or two types of equity security that is registered with the SEC, and the ticker symbol is QRTEA and QRTEB. They report their operation in a fiscal year that ends on December 31st of every year. So they already finished their 2022 year and in 40 days they will make their annual report available for investors. In 2021, they had four reporting segments and the largest was QVC United States and HSN, which made about 59% of 2021 revenue. In terms of product category, they have seven categories like home, beauty, apparel, accessories, electronics, jewelry, and others. And this company has a revenue that comes from outside United States as well as the United States. So geographically, the United States is the biggest market than Japan and Germany. Checking the revenue for a number of years, it is increasing every year except in 2019 and 2021, but the decrease in 2021 is less than 1%. The cost of revenue and the operating costs are both growing normally and following the revenue, which is something we prefer over crazy jumps in any of the prior years, because this situation means that the management is wisely spending on expenses. Scrolling down to the free cash flow, we see a big jump in 2020 and then it goes back to the normal level in 2021. And we know now why it jumped in 2020. To put it in simple words, many brick and mortar stores closed in that year. While this company reached its customers via TV channels and websites, so they didn't have any disruption. Moving on to the debt, it's very stable for the past few years and therefore not concerning, because the debt to assets ratio or how much of the assets is funded by debt is about 43% in 2021. But the concerning thing is the company's ability to service the debt. We measure that by using the times interest earned ratio, which basically measures how many times the interest expense the company makes in earning. So as we can see here, it's going down every year to a dangerous level, which is three times in 2021. So this is the first concerning thing about Q-Rate Retail. Moving on to the outstanding shares, it is decreasing every year. And since 2015, the company bought back about 45% of the outstanding shares, which is a crazy decrease. Of course, it's a great thing for the remaining shareholders who held on the stock because the earning per share and the free cash flow per share almost double for them. Next, we want to see if the company is a dividend company, and mostly they are not, but they did distribute $1.50 in both 2020 and 2021. Keep in mind that the current stock price is $1.94, so even if the next dividend will be only 50 cents, it will be about 25% dividend. But in my opinion, I don't think they will distribute any dividend in the near future, and we will get to the reason in a few minutes. Now we move to the forecasting part, and I want to ask you again to continue watching this video to the end to know why this forecast will show that the stock is very, very cheap when it's not. As we always do, we try to understand what drives the revenue growth. 
and find a consistent metric in the financials that helps us to accurately forecast next year revenue. So after experimenting with different ratios, I found that the inventory turnover was very consistent and it ranged from 9 to 11 with an average of 10. This means they usually sell and buy all the inventory 10 times per year. And to be conservative, let's use 9 because the inventory level is higher than usual at the end of 2021 which is of course the beginning of 2022, which will give us about 14.6 billion in revenue. The free cash flow to the revenue ratio is almost consistent as you can see here at 7% except for 2020. So in my opinion, we should use 7%. For the outstanding shares, we do have the Q3 report for 2022 and we can see that there is a small increase in the outstanding shares in that report. So we'll assume that the company will issue and sell another 1 million shares. And finally, we will start with a 5% return on investment. So these forecasting keys will give us about 14.6 billion in revenue and about 1 billion in the total free cash flow, which means $2.67 free cash flow per share. Using 5% return on investment will make the intrinsic value of the stock about $53. But the current stock price is about $1.94. So what is going on with the market? And why we can purchase the stock for $1.94 when we think it's valued $53. So there must be something negative that causing this big difference. And the reason is mentioned in the annual report. So this is a good example of the benefit of reading the annual reports. On December 18th, 2021, there was a big fire in the company's second largest fulfillment center in North Carolina state in the United States. And the damage was too much to the point that the company decided to close down that fulfillment center because it's beyond repair. And of course, some of the inventory was damaged, but they have insurance which should help recover some of the losses. In other words, this is the actual reason why the stock fell by about 75% since January of 2022. Because the company started this year with this big negative news, that of course scared off many investors and caused the demand for owning this company to slowly decrease, which means gradual decrease in the stock price. This bad news also led to an impairment loss in the company's intangible assets. As we can see here in the Q3 report, the loss amount is 3 billion and 81 millions, which killed the net income and any positive free cash flow in 2022. So going back to the file and the forecast tab, this $2.67 free cash flow per share that we just forecast is not going to materialize. And actually the company is going to have a negative free cash flow this year. But the question is, why then this analysis didn't capture that? My response is that this analysis reflects the capacity of the company's operations to generate free cash flow, and it doesn't predict fires or any other irregular sudden negative events like wars or natural disasters. So in other words, in my opinion, this stock currently doesn't have any value because the company is burning cash and not generating any free cash flow. But I want to bring your attention to a very important thing, which is that the company's revenue in the Q3 report of 2022 only went down by 14% comparing to 2021. So with the fact that they lost their second largest fulfillment center, the company's revenue is about 8.5 billion in the first nine months of 2022. This means that the company still enjoys a good market share and a customer satisfaction. And the decrease of revenue, the 14%, could be justified by the disruption that happens due to the fire. In my opinion, it is possible in a short period of time, this company could come back to be free cash flow positive. We assume that in 2024, it will be free cash flow positive, which is in two years. And the stock price will go back to the January 2021 level, which is around $8. And we acquired the stock today for its current price, which is $1.94. This means a 312% return on investment in two years, or 156% return on investment per year. In my opinion, it is a possibility because the revenue didn't get hit too much due to the loss of the fulfillment center. I'm really curious to know what you think, so let me know in the comment section. The last thing I want to mention, supporting this channel will motivate me to make more analysis video, so please consider subscribing and liking this video.